Welcome back to the Unlimited Expedition. This week, we're in Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory. Check it out. Litchfield National Park is situated an hour and a half drive south of Darwin. We commence this expedition in Adelaide River and head south on the Dorrit Road before heading west on the Dally Creek Road and finding ourselves at the southern end of Litchfield National Park. We transverse the park south to north on the Reynolds River track and find ourselves in the main tourist area of Litchfield. We end this expedition in Darwin, the capital of the Australian tropics. As we're here at Adelaide River, we've just filled up with water and fuel. Now we're going to start our Litchfield National Park expedition. We have got about 80 kilometres of bitumen before we get down to the southern end of Litchfield National Park. So probably be about an hour's drive, I guess. Just having a quick detour here to Robin Falls. Well, we found the falls right at the end of this little track. Still plenty of boulders to cross over. Oh wow, look at that. That's the best shower I've had in about a week, I reckon. I forgot the soap though. Well, that was pretty cool, that little waterfall and the swimming hole. Really enjoyed that. Shame that by the time I got back to the car, I was all hot and ready for another swim, but... I think uh, Litchfield should have a few swimming holes. Hope so. Uh, a bit of an impromptu extension of our expedition. We're going to go down to Daly River. Sophie wants to see an art gallery down there, so we'll pop down there. It's another 40 or 50 k's past our turn off, and they're going to come back. So about 80 k's maybe. Daly River is an Aboriginal community located on the Daly River itself. There is a supermarket where you can stock up on supplies and fuel is available. This is a dry community so alcohol restrictions do apply. To move any further west than Daly River you will need a permit from the Aboriginal Corporation. Well it turns out today is the one day of the year that the art gallery curator goes for training in Alice Springs. Just turned off onto the Reynolds River track in the Litchfield National Park. So this track goes from the south to the north. Really good scenery so far. It says it's a four wheel drive only track, so hopefully there'll be a bit of action, but at this stage it's all looking pretty civilized. We're planning on getting up to Surprise Creek Campground, which is not very far away. It's about four o'clock now, so it should be right on beer o'clock when we arrive. Apparently they've got some showers there, so pretty excited about that. Litchfield National Park is located in the Australian tropics and thus has a monsoonal weather pattern. We have arrived here right on the change in season and there has been two or three big downpours already. This has left the Reynolds River track with significant track flooding in areas and I don't think it'll be long until national parks close down the park for the wet season. Well guys, surprise Creek Falls have just arrived. Well, 
Well, good morning, guys. Beautiful little camp spot, that. Plenty of space for probably about 10, 15 vehicles. Unfortunately, they didn't have a shower. A bit disappointed about that, but uh, luckily we've got one on board here. In this area of Australia, you will typically find two types of termite mounds cathedral mounds and magnetic mounds. It's not uncommon to see cathedral mounds towering over four meters high. Magnetic mounds are a lot shorter, typically one to two meters. Okay guys, so these are the magnetic termite mounds. The reason they're called magnetic termite mounds is because of this. They look like that from the east and the west. They look like that from the north or the south. The reason why the ants do that is to minimise exposure to the sun. Here we've got one that's actually broken in half. You can see that it looks like an aero bar inside, all those little galleries. This is the first of two crossings of the Reynolds River, which you must make if you are taking the Reynolds River track. This particular crossing is a little bit daunting as you cannot see the other side. There are two or three options for line as you weave in amongst the tree. The base of the river is reasonably solid gravel and there are depth markers along the way. Walking the river prior to crossing is really not advisable because this is a saltwater crocodile environment. Well, it is a bit of a hike up here to the falls. It's probably about two kilometres. But I'll tell you what, it was well worth it. Alright guys, that was the Tijanara Falls. Beautiful spot. It's a bit of a walk, but it was well worth it. Now we're off to the Old Blythe Homestead. Check that out. The Old Blythe Homestead is about a two kilometer excursion off the Reynolds River track. The gatekeeper is this 50 meter swampy creek crossing, which one must transverse before arriving at the homestead. Once again, it is a solid gravel base, but there are no depth markers on this one, but the water is quite clear and you can see the bottom. The Blythe Homestead was constructed in 1928 by the Sargent family. It acted as an outpost to their main dwelling on their cattle lease, some 25 miles away. Many of the family's hardships are reflected in this family album. Here we are at the second crossing of the Reynolds River. This one is no less daunting than the first. It's approximately 60 metres long and you cannot see the other side. In this case, I can see that other vehicles have been through here today and I'm not too concerned about getting stuck. There are depth markers in place and there is a good solid gravel base. Although not a particularly difficult river crossing, the crocodile factor does play on one's mind and seeing the other side does bring a feeling of relief. Just a few kilometres beyond the crossing of the Reynolds River East Branch, we find ourselves merging onto the main Litchfield Road. 
Well, that Reynolds River track was a great little overnight jaunt. I really enjoyed that. They rated the track quite difficult, which I don't think I'd agree with. There's two river crossings that are, oh, I think they're about 500 millimeters deep. A very good bottom though. Definitely not probably suitable for a caravan, but camper trailers are no problem, and I think any four-wheel drive's no problem either, so, yeah. Anyway, really good fun. Right, guys, we're here at Wangi Falls. We got Wi-Fi and everything. A little bit different to the ones we were at this morning, but anyway. We'll have a look at this guy, will ya? Getting around like he owns a place. We're here at the Lost City, which is just a series of these beautiful rock formations. Incredible. Little hollows. In a lot of areas, it looks like it's been layered together by a bricklayer. It's incredible. It took us about half an hour off the main road to come in here. It's marked as a four-wheel drive track. But yeah, definitely worth the excursion. You can easily spend a couple of hours roaming around the Lost City, exploring all the nooks and crannies. These incredible sculptures are the result of millions of years of wind and rain sweeping across the landscape. The Florence Falls area of Litchfield National Park is accessible to two-wheel drive and there's much to do and see in this area. There are many bushwalks through the tropical forest and most of them have paved walkways. Swimming in any of the creeks or falls in this area is considered to be very low crocodile risk. The Bamboo Creek Tin Mine was established in 1906 and abandoned in 1955. This mine is very typical of the small scale tin and copper mining that took place in this area in the early 1900s. Relics of the operation are strewn across the hillside and you can even climb into the mine itself if you wish. Well guys, we've just exited the Litchfield National Park. We're heading north on the Litchfield National Park Road. That was a fantastic experience, Litchfield. I highly recommend it. A uh, really, really great park. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Now we're going to head up to Darwin for a few days, Darwin and around. We're going to spend one more night on the road before we get to Darwin. Not really sure where at this stage, but it's going to see what we can find on the way into Darwin. Well guys, we've decided that we're going to go straight to Darwin. I got a really good deal on a hotel for four nights, so I'm really, really excited. We're both really excited. Four nights in a hotel, it's going to be so good. <laughs> Well guys, you got to spoil yourself every now and then. It's been three months since we have had our own bed and not slept in a tent. And there's my best mate up there, loving him. We've got our own bathroom. How good is that? We are in luxury. Well, who's this young fella? 
Today we're in Darwin. We're checking out the city of Darwin. We're just walking around, seeing what we can find. Heading into the information center right now. So hopefully you can get a little map in there, find out what we've got. <laughs> 